Well, today we're just talking about brushes. That's it. Many of you have asked me to do an update on the current brushes that I use. Now, they haven't changed a whole lot, but it has been five years since I've done that update. And a little bit of advice and tips on how to choose. What's the best? Is there a best? What do you mean your favorite? Since when do you have a favorite? Give me that. All right, minders, welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. And today we're talking about brushes. Now, I haven't made an update on what I use and my favorites for some time. If you spend a lot of time around this channel, you can kind of get a sense of what I like and what I use. Really, the last update video I did on this was, so oh, five years ago. A lot has not really changed. Uh, some has changed, but I've had requests on many occasions to update this video and just say what my favorites are, what I'm using, and I think more importantly, why. Now, let me just say this to begin with. Uh, brushes are going to be one of your easiest categories. If you're talking about paper, paint, and brushes, my recommendation has always been to invest in paper first, make sure you have the best paper, paint second, buy the best paint you can afford, buy fewer colors, if that'll help you afford a better paint. Fewer colors are better than more colors. More colors will really not help you that much. 8 to 12 colors at most is all you need to start. So that's your second category for investing the most amount of money. The final category, the one you need to worry about the least, I'm not saying you don't need to worry about it, but brushes are usually uh, easy to find at a reasonable price. You can spend a lot, you can spend a little, and you can still have a decent brush. So that's just sort of a preamble. Now I have several favorites, and when I say favorites, please do not in your mind replace the word favorites with best. There are really, really great brushes out there that I don't use, either because I just haven't tried them, or I haven't gotten in the habit of using them, or I just tend to go back to the ones that I know and use the most. I had someone ask me the other day, Steve, can you pl please recommend the best brush? And my answer is no, I really can't. I can tell you what my favorites are, but what characteristics are you looking for? Where are you going to buy them? Because uh, if you go to Amazon, you're going to have a limitation to certain brands. If you go to your local art store, you're going to have limitations. But in almost all cases, you're going to be able to find something that's, that's pretty good that you can use. So for me to tell you the, the best is really probably not possible. There is no best, at least in my opinion. And I think that's really an advantage for watercolorists because you've got so many choices out there. And it's hard, really, to make a mistake on a brush unless you just buy something that's absolutely dirt cheap. All right, well, let's start with my list. And this one has topped my list since the beginning of my channel and even before I started my channel. And that is silver brush, black velvet. Now, it comes with a caveat. And I don't say this is my all-time favorite brush anymore because I go more by characteristics. The black velvets are limp brushes. They are a combination, a blend of real squirrel and artificial fiber or synthetic fiber. They're meant to hold a lot of water as squirrel, real natural squirrel does. And they're very, very soft. These are probably one of the softest brushes I had. But as a result, they're kind of limp, meaning they don't have a lot of snap. Now, these are the ones I tend to use of uh, the silver brush black velvet. In the smaller sizes, like I use uh, the full out of this four and six. These are two of my favorite. Just get down in there and paint, you know, brushes. They're fine. Uh, there's enough snap. And even up to this eight, I think this eight is probably the largest round that I tend to use. I have bigger ones, but as you get them uh, wet, they they just they kind of lose their snap. I forget what this is, an 16 or an 18. These make good mops, like quills, just because of how much water they will hold. But honestly, I don't tend to reach for them. They're fine. They're very expensive at that size. The largest uh, silver brush black velvets I tend to reach for are these, the oval washes. I love the oval washes. Uh, here, here you can see, give you a good idea how, how limp they can be when they're wet. This one's wet. But I love this as a first wash brush. 
because I can go from big washes down to, you know, finessing a little bit of the detail. It's easy to, in the first washes that I put down, to paint around shapes, that sort of thing. I also love their flats. I use the flats quite a bit. These are great for glazing. Really, any of the brushes, any of the black velvets are great for glazing. Putting a thin color layer over another color because the softness of the brush is less likely to lift up the color underneath. Well, when I need them, when I use them, they're fantastic performers. Probably the most used brush in my collection is this one, the Princeton Elite. I have several, obviously. <laughs> this is the, not even all of them. The Princeton Aqua Elite is considered a Kalinsky, a faux Kalinsky imitator. Wait, that's redundant. <laughs> a Kalinsky imitator, a faux Kalinsky brush. They're meant to imitate Kalinsky sable. I especially like the long rounds because they have these really uh, needle-like points, but all of the brushes are useful. Uh, just a word, though, about quills. Once upon a time, I had a fascination with quills. Honestly, I don't use them much anymore. There's nothing wrong with quills. If you like a quill, uh, there's uh, no drawbacks necessarily. It's just a brush that holds a lot of water. Don't recommend them for beginners because of that. They tend to be used uh, more, uh, the pros that use them tend to use these uh, because they're great for loose painting, go for broad washes down to smaller details, but you're usually moving around a lot of paint and a lot of water. Not all quills are that way, but uh, a lot of them are. If I use a quill, I tend to use smaller ones. I like the Da Vinci Casaneo, for example, but this is a great brand. The really good brush. I use all of the the varieties: small rounds, large rounds, flats, oval wash. Now, in terms of categories, uh, you will see a lot of makers that will have a similar category. Dynasty, for instance, has a Fokolinsky Trakel, which is a brush that I've started trying to use more recently. They have a Protege and a Protege Plus, and those are Fokolinsky. Anytime you see uh, a brush maker, especially a major brush maker that has a faux Kalinsky, that's usually uh, one they're trying to imitate Kalinsky, obviously, and it's usually a, it's their top performer in a lot of cases. So again, uh, when I say this is probably my most used brush brand and category, that does not mean it's the best or that you're going to be so much better off with this than any others. There's a lot of other ones out there that are comparable. Now, I'm not even dealing with true Kalinsky sables. You may or may not use Kalinsky sables. That's fine. They're becoming harder and harder to get. That's all I'm going to say about Kalinsky. You don't really need to spend the money on Kalinsky sable anymore. There are plenty of great alternatives out there. All right. That is Princeton Aqua Elite. So those two bring up the top and kind of round out um, from the all more all-purpose category to the softer category my most used brands. Also used brands, you've been around this channel long, you know I love uh, Princeton Neptune. Um, the Princeton Neptune is closer in type to the silver brush black velvet. It's meant to be a squirrel imitation. It's soft. It has a tiny bit more snap than the silver brush black velvet. I tend to not use the rounds very much because they don't, at least the ones I've tried, don't have as good a points, so if I need a point, I don't get a great point with a Princeton Neptune. It could be just the ones that I have, I don't know. Uh, that's not necessarily a big deal, because sometimes you want a brush with a rounded tip. You don't want one that has a point. I love their flats. I tend to use the flats and the oval wash the most when I'm using a Princeton Neptune. I also like their rigor. I use their rigor a good bit. So another great High quality uh, brush intended for watercolor. And once again, if I had to put it in a category, I'd say it's the soft category. Great water holder and soft brushes are, are really great for glazing or putting uh, color over dry existing color in thin washes. Let's talk about another category that or brand that I used to use a lot and I don't use as much anymore. And that is the Da Vinci Cosmotop Spin. Nothing wrong with it. Still a great brush. It is more of a stiff, snappy brush than probably everything we've talked about so far. It's probably closest to the Aqua Elite. Uh, their rounds uh, don't have great points, 
But if I need a stiff brush, stiffer, uh, sort of a golden tacklon style brush, um, I might pick one of these up. Problem is I just have limited space on where to lay out my brushes. And I tend to lay out the ones I use the most. Uh, if I use the Cosmotop Spin, it will be this smaller cat's tongue. I like that a lot. I've used that a lot. And I like their uh, flat, their smaller flats. But this uh, brush, while I used to use it a lot more, uh, has kind of fallen out of use. Basically, I just had to choose some of the brushes that I was less likely to use for space sake and kind of put them in backup drawers, if you will. Another brush that uh, falls into the faux Kalinsky category that I think is a great brush. I just don't have a lot of them, but I've enjoyed it every time I've used it, is the Escoda Prado. Escoda makes a really great brush. I only have a few rounds, got a decent point. So if you're looking for uh, a good synthetic, that's a Kalinsky imitator, the Escoda Prado is one you could try. Highly recommend it. Let's talk about details. When you get into details, you're talking about sharp points like riggers, needlepoint detail brushes, that kind of thing. A favorite that I've been using more and more is the uh, Silver Brush Golden Natural. These are some of the older varieties, and then they sort of redesigned them with this yellow handle. They are a natural bristle and synthetic blend. I'm not sure what the natural bristle is. Might be goat. Don't know. But they are sensational detail brushes. These are designer rounds, which are smaller compared to the normal sizing conventions you get in others. For instance, this is a 12. Most 12s and, and other brands would be a big fat one, but these designer rounds have longer points and smaller diameters. This number six, fantastic. It, it acts almost like a rigger. Fantastic detail brush. So I really like these. They, they perform really well. You can see this number 12 is one of their newer handles. Look at that point. So for remember to use them, uh, I will reach for these for details. Sometimes you end up just using the brush in your hand. Another favorite for details are the handmade Lebensen brushes. Really have come to love these. I mean, you can just see that razor tip on this larger brush. This is their large goat and synthetic blend. This is the small goat and synthetic blend. Really nice. This is the Silver Fox. This is one of their pricier brushes. Nice little detail brush. I would classify these as uh, luxury brushes, not something you have to buy or spend money on, but they are great. And I think most of them fall into the detail category. Another great one is their Itty Bitty Elk. This is the Itty Bitty Siberian Elk brush. Excellent detail brush. Almost forgot to show that one. Also in the detail category are riggers. One of my all-time favorites has been this Grumbacher Golden Edge. It's just a standard uh, golden Taclon brush, but I like riggers uh, with a lot of snap, and this one has a lot of snap. Princeton Neptune, uh, that rigger is pretty nice. A little bit softer, not as much snap. And of course, going back to uh, one of the categories I showed already, the Princeton Aqua Elite, really good rigger. I tend to use a number one or a number two. Da Vinci Cosmo Top Spin uh, makes a great rigger. So there are several of those, uh, several of these riggers that I like to use. All right, so maybe you're asking, okay, well, what about other brands? Can you recommend some other brands? Well, you know, there's so many out there. I would check out any of the major makers. Dynasty makes a lot of great brushes. Another brand I haven't mentioned is Royal Long and Nickel. You can find some decent brushes there. Just do your research. If you're looking for a high quality brush, go to their website. Try to find out uh, what they recommend as their top brushes. The ones rated for watercolor. Performance is likely to decrease the more mixed media you get. You know, ones that are not only rated for watercolor, but also acrylic and some others. If you shop at Hobby Lobby much, uh, the Master's Touch brushes are pretty good. So that's something you can look at, and you can usually get really good sales on Master's Touch brushes. Hockey brushes are another category. I've tried to introduce uh, those into my painting process, and I use them every now and then. They haven't become a regular thing yet, but uh, there's some cool things you can do with hockey brushes. Now, I have a brushes playlist, and in that brushes playlist, uh, I have 
uh, got episodes where I've done this before, talked about uh, my favorites. In that playlist, I have a Dynasty review, where I re reviewed several brands. I have a Trakel review, the Trakel Protégé mainly, and the Protégé Plus. So you can go check those out. I will put the link to the playlist, the brushes playlist, down below. Another decent uh, brush is the Creative Mark Mimic series. They have everything from Faux Squirrel to uh, Faux Kalinsky. And Creative Mark Mimic brushes are usually pretty good. That's a Jerry's Artorama brand. You'll do well with any of these brushes, really. Thanks, everyone. I hope that was helpful. There are probably a lot of you out there that have what about questions. What about this brush? What about that brush? I'm probably not going to be able to answer you. Just do a little bit of research, and you can probably make a good choice. I think a brushes are the easiest category. To get, get, to get decent choices and not spend a lot of money. But I hope what I've shown you and told you about the brushes that I do have and use will help. Put comments down below if you have questions or give me your recommendation. What's the brush that you use that you absolutely love? Put it in the comments below and uh, that perhaps will uh, help out other viewers. Thanks everyone. I appreciate you watching. Thank you patrons for your support of this channel. And we'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.